Hello, massage nurse. Today I'm going to be doing lesson nine, the muscles of ankle and foot, foot movements, which are plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion, and eversion. So I did draw most of the muscles. However, some of my students are really overwhelmed with learning so many muscles. So I'm only going to, um, you know, go over the main ones, okay? I didn't draw them all, but I really just want you guys to get the idea and learn the main muscles, okay? So let's start with the anterior part. Well, you know what, let me review the bones. The fibula is on the lateral side, so your lateral malleolus is from your fibula, which is the non-bearing uh, bone. And then the tibia, which is really, you can feel it. This is your shin bone. This is your shin bone. And the medial malleolus, the medial ankle bone, that's from the tibia. This is from the fibula. And so this will be your anterior part, and then your medial part, and then the posterior part of the leg. Another thing that I need to let you guys know is that in uh, medical terms, this is the thigh, and this is considered the leg. Just like this is the antebrachium, and this is the brachium, this is the thigh, and then this is the leg. So this is, from the knee down, is considered the leg. So here you have your tibialis anterior, which is the main one. And uh, it originates right here at the head of the tibia. And it inserts at the first metatarsal by the, by the big toe. This one is where you get shin splints. So if, if you have a client that comes in and they have shin splints, you wanna make sure and work the tibialis anterior. Right next to that, you have your extensor digitorum, you know, right here, because it extends all the digits, you know. So this is the extensor digitorum longus because it extends the digits. And then you've got your extensor uh, hallucis longus because it extends, remember, this is your hallux. Your big toe is your hallux. Your thumb is your pollux. So anytime you have hallux in it, it's in regards to the big toe. So the, next to that, you have your fibularis longus. And the fibularis longus and the tibialis anterior for, are the, consider the stirrup muscles because what they do is, okay, so the tibialis anterior crosses the anterior part and it inserts at the first um, metatarsal. And then the fibularis longus, which is this one right here, the brown one, it comes down on the fibular side, the head of the fibula comes down goes underneath the foot and it forms a, forms a stirrup just kind of like when you go horseback riding and you put your foot in a stirrup your foot has a natural stirrup and it's from formed by the tibialis anterior and the fibular longus okay and then here's the brevis the brevis is really small and then you have a tertius, but I didn't draw that one. So the fibularis brevis is just right here laterally, and it's on the side, and it goes also posterior. So these are the anterior and lateral view, and now I'm gonna show you the posterior view, and that's that would be the gastrocnemius, and the uh, uh, soleus, and um, I, I forgot which other one I drew, but when, when she turns over, I'll be able to show you. Okay, so now we have the posterior view, and you have the gastrocnemius, which, man, she's, I've been so lucky with my model. They, I have the best part. She's got amazing, can you flex your, you know, like you can really see her gastrocnemius right here. She, she's got amazing uh, legs here. So this originates at the epicondyles of the femur, and it comes down, and it kind of splits right here, and it's attached by the Achilles tendon. They all get attached by the Achilles tendon, which that's how we know it, but the medical term is the calcaneal tendon. This, is, this calcaneal tendon gets shortened when you wear high heels. It's very important for you to kind of balance that out. Actually, high heels are not good for you because you can tear this muscle because you can actually shorten it when you're always you know, wearing high heels. Now, underneath the gastrocnemius, you have your soleus or soleus, depending, like I said, who's pronouncing it, which will be the green one right here. It's underneath. This, the gastrocnemius is the most superficial. Then you've got your uh, soleus or soleus. And if you have a tibialis anterior, then you have a tibialis posterior, which is this brown one right here, and it crosses and it goes down here, you know, to the, uh, to the heel. 
So you've got four layers here of muscles. And like I said, I drew the main ones and you've got four layers on your foot also. So, uh, so the gastrocnemius, the soleus is underneath and the uh, and, uh, tibialis posterior. And you have others, but th these are the main ones for flexion extension. Now, let me go over that now. So for plantar uh, flexion, plantar flexion is when you're, you know, you're stepping on the gas, you know, when you're, yeah, when you're going like that, that's plantar flexion because you're closing this angle here. So this one, the main one is gastrocnemius, soleus, plantaris, Fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, um, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. And then for dorsiflexion, you know, when you're walking on your heels, that's dorsiflexion, that would be the anterior part, tibialis anterior, fibularis tertius, extensor hallucis longus, and extensor digitorum longus. Now for inversion, inversion is like when you're meditating. So that would, when your feet come together, inversion is, you know, towards, you know, the inside of your foot. So this is tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor hallucis longus. And for eversion towards the lateral side will be your fibularis longus, fibularis brevis, and your tertius. And the reason, you know, you, you wonder why you always hear dorsiflexion and plantar flexion, that's important because when you walk, when you take the first step, step you step with a heel so that's dorsiflexion and then you go you know you put your plantar part down and then you go to you know to the uh to your toes so you go heel flat flat and then to your toes so plantar flexion is you're flexing this part you know you're closing that angle like when you're stepping on the gas of the car or walking on your tippy toes and dorsiflexion is like when you're walking on your heels so this is important when you walk and also if you want to help your clients a lot of times they have problems you know uh, because they wear out their shoe on a certain side you know so if they wear it out on the lateral side you know that they're everting too much or on the inner part they're inverting you know and if they wear out the heel then you know they're heavy on the foot or when they run too you know you can tell how they step you know where they might have the problem on their foot and actually it comes from your hips too so anyway uh this is uh less than nine muscles of the ankle and the foot and next time will be lesson 10. And I hope this really helps you out. I, I, this is for my students. This is what I want. I want you guys to draw the muscles and just really learn the main ones. And don't forget, you know, the Achilles tendon. It's a very large, it's actually the largest tendon in the body. I forgot to mention that. This is the largest tendon in the body. It's very strong. So for someone to tear their Achilles tendon is because they've really, you know, uh, injured it. And I did have a client that after retiring, she decided that she was going to start walking and exercising and she had been wearing heels, you know, her whole uh, uh, time. And so she shortened this, this Achilles tendon. And when she went to flat uh, shoes and tennis shoes, you know, uh, stepping off the curb, she tore her Achilles tendon and had to have surgery. So anyway, just, you know, like I said, anything in moderation, you don't want to abuse any part of uh, your body, but there you have the posterior and then the anterior muscles. I hope this helped you and make sure you draw the muscles for your homework, guys. And until the next time, create a great day.